بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has sent this dina khalis and once from his servants as well dina khalis إلا مخلصين له الدين دين should be pure not contaminated our intentions when doing actions should be of the utmost clarity unadulterated a master chef who's making a seven course meal with the best ingredients and the best of the best recipes will destroy and spoil all his efforts when he uses an ingredient that is expired and rotten. So one contaminant can destroy and wipe out all the efforts. For this deen to be pure, Wahi revelation was protected from Allah from the Arsh down to the methodology of it getting to us Jibreel Amin to Nabi wasalam. There is a clear chain where there is no doubt or contaminants. Likewise, Asahu Kitab Ba'da Kitab Allah, the words of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to make sure then there's no contamination in that as well. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created ulama and mashayikh to protect and preserve the words of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and Imam Bukhari rahimallah had endeavoured and strove to make sure that he in his Bukhari prepared such a standard that it is the most authentic book after the Book of Allah. His routine alone, it wasn't just about the istadad and the potential which Allah gave him but Qabuliyat comes also from Allah. So when a person is accepted, then Allah opens up the way for their acceptance. Allah teaches them, Allah is their guide, Allah is their nurturer, Allah is their murabbi haqiqi. It is said Imam Bukhari rahimallah, kana yakhtimu al-Qur'an fi Ramadan. In Ramadan his routine was at the time of Sahri, he should read approximately 10 paras. وَكَانَ يَخْتِمُ بِالنَّهَارِ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ خَتْمَ He would make one khatam at the time of iftar. So in a 24-hour span, he used to make 40 paras a day. If we calculate it every three days, he would make a separate khatam. So 10 plus 30, 40 khatams in the month of Ramadan and he used to say عند كل خط دعوة مستجابة every khatam has a dua which is accepted it was said that أنه كان مستجاب Imam Bukhari was among those people whose duas were accepted and he himself used to say لا ينبغي للمسلم أن يكون بحالة إذا دعا لم يستجب له It is not possible that a believer is in a condition that he makes dua and his dua is not accepted and he used to say دعوت ربي مرتين فاستجاب لي I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala twice both my duas were accepted and then I decided I wouldn't want to make dua after that فَأَلَعَلَّهُ يُنْقَصْ حَسَنَاتِ If I had to ask Allah for more, my good deeds would have been deprived, depleted. I would have got my rewards in this dunya which I didn't want to happen so that I don't get deprived of rewards in Akhirah, I didn't want to make more dua. Such were the ulama, such were the mashaykh whom Allah had accepted. We need to check ourselves as well that unadulterated ibadah 
and sacrifice for Allah so that we become maqbool عند Allah. Sufyan bin Uyayna rahimallah used to say, لا يصيب عبد حقيقة الإيمان حتى يجعل بينه وبين الحرام عاجزا. A person cannot get the true reality of iman until he makes between himself and haram a barrier. Between halal and haram, he makes a barrier. وحتى يدع الإثم وما تشابه منه. And sins and anything that is doubtful. So taqwa will prevent, will stop a person from forget guna alone. But those grey areas, a person becomes very cautious because he's worried about his iman, he's worried about his akhirah. He doesn't want to contaminate it. Pure milk. We want contaminated milk, we stay far. Uh, different forms of oils, juices, etc. It's 100% pure juice, pure coal pressed, natural extracted. Allah also wants pure. People who breed animals say, we want a thoroughbred. We want a pedigree. We want a pure breed. We need to see Anything which is doubtful may contaminate our system. It contaminates the system and disrupts that which is pure now. Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah say, وَكُوعُ الذَّنْبِ عَلَى الْقَلْبِ To commit a guna, the effect on the heart كَوَكُوعِ الدُّهْنِ عَلَى الثَّوْبِ It's like oil that messes on the clothing. إِمَّا أَن تُعَجِّلَ غَسْلَهُ وَإِنْ لَمْ بَسَطْ Either you will rush to clean it or it will spread, it will proliferate. So when a person gets into doubtful, there's a possibility they will get into haram. So a person has to be very cautious and particular about doubtful areas. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah you say At-taqwa thalathu maratib Three stages for taqwa Himyatul qalbi wal jawarih anil atham To protect the heart and the body, the organs from guna and haram Thumma al-himya anil makruhat Then to abstain from that which is doubtful To abandon doubtful some ulama say it is permissible, some say impermissible. See where your heart goes. If it's incli inclined to the one which is doubtful, then we need to get worried. We need to go on the side of caution. A person is told, La taqrabu zina. Don't go close to zina. Do not commit zina is not mentioned. Do not go close. So the, the parameters are set far away. To protect a person, even if he falls, he'll still fall far away from that, not close. And the third one, ثُمَّ الْحِمْيَةُ عَنِّ الْفُضُولِ وَمَا لَا يَعْنِي And to abandon that which is not necessary. Those things which are pointless, futile and unnecessary, a person abstains from those. So when one has a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is sufficient for one not to perpetrate anything because he has the love of Allah ingrained in his heart. If you love somebody, when you love somebody, automatically you will follow them. Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah say, Man kathura min Allahi hayauhu. إِنْ قَبَضَتْ نَفْسُهُ أَنْ مُجَاهَرَاتِهِ بِالْعِسْيَانِ That a person who has haya in modesty, you have haya أَنْ لَا يَرَاكَ مَوْلَاكَ هَيْثُ نَهَاكَ Your beloved does not see you where he, you don't want him, he does like seeing you in those avenues. So a person who has haya, he withdraws and he retracts 
from any form of disobedience. So open public sinning. He stay forget sinning. Flagrant violation. A person retracts from that. Unfortunately, today through social media, it has snatched our haya and modesty, where people openly, openly we promote sin and ma'asyad, openly people are proud of their disobedience. Forget hiding evil, the friends of Allah hide their good deeds. What a zamana, where people promote their evil. So these platforms deform our akhirat and taqwa is knowing that we need to fulfill the haqq of Allah and fulfuck, fulfill the haqq of the creation of Allah, fulfill the haqq, the rights of Allah and fulfill the haqq, the rights of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sufyan Thawri rahimahullah you say innaka in talqa Allah azza wa jal bi sab'eena dhanban to commit sub 70 gunas fi ma baynaka wa baynahu between you and Allah is lighter what is lighter an talqahu bi dhanbin wahidin fi ma baynaka wa bayna al-ibad that committing and perpetrating an evil with regards to the creation of Allah at least these 70 sins you can make tawbah and repent and Allah is forgiven. But the servant of Allah you don't know what your condition is. So when we make in tilawat of Qur'an and we made a niyat of taqwa, then the different benefits which has been mentioned we should make those niyat as well. Number 16, respecting and honoring the signs of Allah. وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever respects the signs of Allah, then this is a sign of taqwa and piety in the hearts. It is a sign of honor and respect that a person has the azmat and the greatness of Allah in their hearts. The Qur'an, kalam e pak do I put it on the ground? Does my feet face the direction of the Qur'an? When the adhan is going, do I stop dead, still, in my tracks, knowing the Mu'adhin of Allah is calling? Listen to the adhan, reply to the adhan. Does our feet face Qibla Baytullah? Ba'adabba nasib, ba'adabba nasib. A person who has been deprived of etiquettes of respect, they've been deprived of a lot. Shanwar Kashmiri rahimallah was the walking library. He had such adab and etiquettes, forget Quran but kitabs. He never ever touched a kitab without wudu. If he went to the library and he opened a kitab and for some reason it was upside down, he would not turn the kitab. He would go around and look at the kitab from the other side. That's why Allah made him a library. Millat, the reformer of the century, once entered the toilet and he seen ink was on his hand. He immediately went out and washed it. An inquiry he said that this ink is related to knowledge. It is be adbi and disrespectful to enter the toilet with this ink. So respect for the ulama, respect for the elders, mashayikh and seniors. Not ever once in our life to utter any word against an alim. No matter who, what, when the situation, never ever in our life should we ever utter a word of disrespect against a scholar and alim. That is looking, treading a path of disaster. As Gangoi used to say, whoever digs up the grave of so and so will find his face turned away from Qibla. Malan Abul Hassan said, 
I heard this directly from Hazrat Gangai Rahimullah. Whoever discredits or defames the Imma and the Ulama, his face will be turned away from Qibla when he is buried. And Hazrat you say, I perceive, perceive that this person's face has been turned away from Qibla. So respect for all the Sha'ir of Allah. Bishar Hafi was quite famous and he was called Hafi because he should walk barefooted. One day while in a drunken state, he came across a paper written Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the name of Allah, fi tariqi kaghal. And he picked up that paper and whatever money he had, he bought itar and perfumed. And he perfumed the paper and he placed it in his house with reverence on a high spot. طَيَّبَ بِهَا الْكَاغَدَ وَجَعَلَهَا فِي And he placed it, it with reverence. فَرَآ فِيهَا كَأَنَّ قَائِلًا يَقُول He's seen in a dream. يَا بِشْرُ طَيَّبْتَ إِسْمِي لَأُطَيِّبَنَّ إِسْمَكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ You perfumed my name, I've perfumed yours. You've exalted my name, I've exalted yours. You've purified my name, I've purified yours. I will perfume your name in this dunya in akhirah. And Allah gave him he died, he life loved a saintly, aesthetic life that few have ever come close to him in righteousness. And from that day onwards he walked without shoes. People call him Bishr al-Hafi, the barefooted one. When somebody asked him why he never wore shoes, he said, my master guided me when I was barefooted and I will remain in this condition till death. The other, another story also mentioned with him about how he got Hidayah and it's connected to that as well. So when we make uh, the Azmat and, and honor the, the alamat and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will honor us as well. Imam Dhabi has mentioned in one of his kitabs about the story of Marik bin Dinar in his seer. There is some discussion about authenticity. A, a burglar scaled the wall of Malik bin Dinar one night, managed to get inside. The thief was disappointed as there was nothing worth stealing. Sometimes you the steal the thief uh, comes in and he feels so sorry for you. He leaves some money. So anyway, Azad Malik was busy performing salat and uh, he finishes salat and faced the thief. And without showing any signs of shock and worry, he made salam to him and he told him, Lam tajid shay'an min ad dunya. You haven't found what you're looking for. You came for dunya, fatar ghabu fi shayim min al akhirah. Let me teach you something about akhirat. Don't leave empty handed. Qala naam. He said, sure. He said, make some wudu. He brought a jug of water. And uh, he said, make ablution. Perform two rakats of salah. And you will leave you with a greater treasure than you have come for. So this person here accepted, he made wudu, he performed salah and he said, do you mind if I stay a little bit longer? He performed another two rakats. He said, stay as long as you want. The thief ended up spending the entire night there and he prayed and made dua and he bowed it. And uh, he said, you can leave now. He said, would you mind if I stay longer? He stayed longer. He said, do you mind if I fast? He said, you can fast. He spent a number of days, he was fasting in the day, making ibadah at night. الرجل على دين خليله That's why it's very important to see our companions who we spend time with, go out in the path of Allah, spend time with the mashayikh, ulama, etc. Haq. Then he said, I've made tawbah from my sins and uh, I've decided to leave the life I led. He mended his ways and one day he came across his friend was a thief 
said if you found any treasures, he says, my, my brother, what I found is Malik bin Dinar. I went to steal from him and he stole my heart. I went to steal dunya from him. He stole my heart. I have repented and made Tawbah to Allah and I remain at the door of Allah until I become his obedient servant. The amal for today is to give sadaqah وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيُرَبِّي لِأَحَدِكُمْ الثَّمَرَةً Allah will nourish, Allah will increase one of you, your dates or your morsel of food. كَمَا يُرَبِّي أَحَدُكُمْ فَلُوَّهُ أَوْ فَصِيلَهُ أَتَّى تَكُونَ مِثْلَ أَحُدٍ Allah will nourish it until it will become like the mountain of Uhud. Ya Allah give us tawfiq, make him amal wa akhiru dawana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.